and welcome to part two of my custom commission set for YouTube member JC Hayes. On Friday, I brought you the Union 76 liveried Ford tow truck that he had asked for. Now I bring you the complimentary Ford van that I'll paint in 76 colours. Despite being a European ying to the Ford N series trucks yang, JC was happy to go ahead with this 1994 facelift transit. This is the vehicle the casting is based on. The model is based on the 1994 facelifted version of a second generation transit. It was numbered MB281 and was first seen in the rest of world matchbox line in 1996. The design this example carries is from a later 2004 model. The casting borrowed many design cues from the 1986 to 1994 MB165 Ford Transit. This was based on a pre-facelift van. Again, this was a non-US exclusive initially, but in 1990 saw a worldwide release in a yellow rider truck rental livery. Until this point, it had received a wide array of liveries, including the original motorsport livery, an ambulance, British Telecom as part of the Convoy Action Pack, Unichem, Royal Mail, XP Logistics, Weller, Pisa Cox Preservation, and Great Ormond Street Hospital promotional designs. Sadly, the caustic soda didn't stack up as well on the transit as it did on the wrecker, so I turned to Old Faithful No Nonsense Paint Stripper. As well as other promotions and many plain white models being produced, there were Australian exclusives in Australia Post and Telecom Australia liveries. The Transit left the US mainline in 1992, continuing in a yellow Cadbury's Flake livery for two years for the rest of the world. Its final release was a plain white van with the Matchbox logo stamped on each side for 1994. There were also further promo patterns with Blick and KitKat tampos. The facelifted model arrived in 1996. This naturally followed the features of the real van, but the casting's facelift lost the headlights which formed part of the transparency. These were now cast metal. The base previously included the grille, but this was modified to now reflect the new bumper shape. Little changed on the sides, except for the side repeaters which were moved forward slightly. There were minimal changes on the rear, aside for the location of the Ford emblem, the transit font and the removal of the word transit from the number plate location. The underside was near identical. In its first outing in the rest of world mainline in 1996, it was painted light blue with a surfer tampo on the sides. In 1998, it featured the same tampos, but on a white-bodied van. For 1999, the Transit was red with a Vinnie's Pizza tampo on either side, while Germany received a Lufthansa livery. In 2000, it was available in yellow with a Union Jack on the sides, or red with Coca-Cola Polar Bear branding. Other Coca-Cola liveries appeared in 2001 and 2002. It could also be found in SWAT Team, Roofing, This Paint Can Design, Transit and City Services Water and Power liveries. Its final showing was a 2008 Scooby-Doo design. Sadly, I lost most of my footage painting JC's van, but it is the same brilliant blue as the base section of the tow truck. A version of this MB281 van was released in 1999 with roof-mounted beacons. This came in German Fire Department, Medic, K9 Patrol, SOS, Police and Ambulance designs, with a very late paramedic van appearing in 2012. These received three different MB numbers, MB431, MB554 and MB848. Additionally, a single release with the code MB472 was released for a short run in the UK in 2000. This had roof beacons, but arranged in a V shape. It had London Fire Brigade tampos. The Transit itself is the third best selling van series of all time. Conveniently excluding the Taunus Transit, 
The official first generation Transit was initially built in 1965 in Ford's Langley plant in a former aircraft manufacturing factory. Demand quickly outstripped the plant's capability, with production moving to Southampton and later Genk in Belgium and in Turkey. It found rapid success and is a story I will delve into on another day. Briefly though, the Transit received a facelift in 1977 before the second generation arrived in 1986. This van now had a smooth windscreen and bonnets both in line with one another, as opposed to the stepped one on the first generation. The front suspension was fully independent on the short wheelbase transits. It borrowed vastly the same engine options as its predecessor, though the SX 3 litre V6 was replaced by the 2.9 litre Cologne V6 in 1989 due to emissions regulations. Fully independent front suspension was standardised across the range in 1992, while a redesigned floor increased payload potential. This change coincided with a minor facelift, with these vans having slightly more rounded headlights. In 1994, the facelift that this casting is based on first appeared on the Transit. It had a new front fascia, while air conditioning, electric windows, central locking, electric mirrors and airbags were all made available as optional extras. The third gen Transit launched in 2000. The second generations went out of production in 2003, where it continued being built in Vietnam. Chinese firm JMC licensed the Transit and sold it between 2006 and 2016 with a front fascia and bumper revision. These used Isuzu and Mitsubishi sourced engines instead of Fords. Much of this platform was carried over to the JMC Teshin in 2017. This continues to be built. It certainly looks different from the front, but the sides and rear are unequivocally Transit. Anyway, now I'm about finished with the Citadel Colour Shade Null Noil Gloss, to give it its full name, I can apply the 76 decals. These are slightly more modern than those used on the tow truck, from a period where the Union name had been dropped. I thought that a large 76 circle on each side would contrast the rich blue background colour. What I needed was to now roll out the decal over and over to allow it to adhere to the cast panel lines. Then after that I can move on to a small logo for the centre of the bonnet. This will again be another round 76. Ok, so now it's time to finalise this build for JC. First up, I slot in the transparency. And after that comes the interior piece, which I've painted a very period miserable grey. I have improved it with some dashboard detailing though. The mid 2000s rims I've replaced with some classic 8 dots, which I think suit this period transit remarkably well. They both balance on two sets of extensions from the interior piece. There is no suspension on this model. Lastly, the base connects over two tongue fitments at the back and a single tapped rivet post to the front. It's secured with a 3mm M2 screw. So this is how JC's transit van looked before I gave it a full custom 76 livery. It has a detailed front fascia ripe for detailing further with some colour. These rims are in need of replacing, and that red interior needed toning down. My task was to create a matching model to the tow truck I'd turned out for JC. For this, I went with a slightly more modern 76 livery, more fitting with the age of the van. And this is how it looked when I sent it over to JC. I really like how well the painted details look on the front. It transforms the model and breathes life into it. 
gone is the brash and bright red interior in favour of a plain old grey look that the Transit would have been fitted out with back in the 90s. Round the back, the light clusters again look far better with some attention paid to them. So what do you think of this custom piece? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Also, which do you prefer, this or the custom tow truck? If you can't make up your mind, I'll put both on the turntable at the end of this rotation. Of course, the opinion that matters most for these two is JC's, who commissioned them. I hope that he likes them and can understand the direction I took with them now that I've explained myself in both videos. So here they both are. Drop your thoughts below and be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this duo. Make sure you're subscribed for all the latest and if you'd like your own Diecast Restos commission piece and accompanying video, get in touch. My email address is in the video description. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so on Patreon or on YouTube memberships like JC. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.